rival males will be attracted by the activity. It then becomes a test of who can hold their breath the longest. As more males are attracted, the dance becomes a serpentine orgy. Several males will be courting a female at once. Now, it's not known whether she's giving off a particular chemical scent or an odour or what they call a pheromone, but uh, the males are definitely attracted by this activity, and so it's not unusual to find three to six males courting a, uh, a single female. But in the end, there can be only one. Perhaps wearing the female out proves him to be a proper suitor. But it doesn't appear to be the whole story. This vigorous nudging is new even to Mick and has never before been filmed. Its significance remains unknown. The pair leaves the scientist on the bombing, preferring to keep the final act of their courtship a private affair. But the olives have returned and reveal this most intimate of efforts. Footage of this behavior is also a Discovery Channel first. It is now the larger female who is in control, and the attached male is dragged around the reef according to her whim. It would definitely be described as a, a very special moment to sort of see two snakes entwined courting in, in the water, having to breathe and, and still act as one snake um, throughout their courtship. It's one of the things they have to do, the land snakes don't really have to worry about. Mick notices a dusky sea snake swimming nearby. The slight bulge in her abdomen tells him it's a pregnant female. Birth remains a secret. It's thought that expectant mothers hide in the shallows but until that time, they can still be seen around the reef. At eight to ten months, the sea snake gestation period is far longer than any land snake. Exactly why remains to be studied. The gathering clouds signal the approach of the storm season. During their brief visit, Mick and Scott have observed behavior that has never before been seen. The studies they've made over the past weeks may be elementary, but they have shed much light on the lives of sea snakes. Analysis will come later, but some early conclusions can be drawn. The sea snake's amazing adaptability not only let them colonize the sea, it also enables so many of them to coexist in a small area. By specialising in types of prey, territory and time of day, the different species at Ashmore can overlap one another without undue competition. Perhaps more importantly, 
the two biologists have been able to show that these creatures are much less aggressive than popularly thought. During his time here, Mick has even adopted one species as his favorite. There's an Everest species that doesn't deserve a, a reputation as, as a dangerous animal. That would have to be the turtle-headed sea snake. It's uh, got a, a, a rather an appealing look to it. They've got large eyes. They've got uh, this large scale on the upper and lower jaw that uh, actually makes them look like a, a turtle, and therefore they've, they've lost their, their fearsome look. There's another good reason for Mick to feel an attachment to the turtle-headed sea snake. This docile little snake shows evolution in action. Reef fish are agitated by its presence, but they're not intimidated. That's because the snake has all but dispensed with its traditional weapons. And instead of eating small fish, has developed a taste for their eggs. Mick has discovered that the turtle head has replaced its fangs and venom with a specially adapted scale on its jaw for scraping tiny fish eggs from the coral. Here you have a snake that's really evolved into a very sophisticated fish egg feeding species. It's taken the sea snakes in a, in a new direction. The turtle-headed sea snake could just be the beginning of a whole new family of reptiles. Sea snake evolution is very much a work in progress. But Mick's time here has come to an end. Like the other visitors to Ashmore, it's time for he and Scott to leave this isolated patch of land. The work will continue, analyzing the behavior they've seen and planning the next visit. But on the way home, they spot another ocean wanderer and are keen to get a closer look. Most sea snakes are confined to the coasts and reefs where they hunt. To see one in deep water is a rarity. The yellow-bellied sea snake hunts on the surface, ambushing the small fish that mistake it for driftwood. Agile, aggressive and highly venomous, they're seldom seen near shore. They are also taking a new evolutionary direction, giving up the security of the reefs for life in oceanic waters. As a result, they drift in the warm tropical zone that stretches from South Africa all the way to Panama. These ocean voyagers may even encounter more humans in the future. A rise in sea temperature is all it would take for these snakes to widen their distribution to more populated areas like the California coast. Such a warming may indeed be happening. Another possibility is that via the Panama Canal, these snakes could reach the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, where they would surely thrive. In a changing world, these serpents of the sea are capable of almost anything.